In this video, I'm gonna share with you things that I never buy or waste money on. Number one is bottled water. I think it's ridiculous to pay for bottled water. Nine times out of 10, if I'm somewhere and someone hands me a bottle, that's one thing. But if you think about it, majority of the water bottling companies are just tapping into the same sources as you. Now, I do understand there are places in the world where you know water is hard to come by and it might not be the cleanest. But for the most part, you can slam a filter in one of those pitchers, whether it's Brita or Zero Water or whatever it is, and you can drink from there, saving you not only a ton of trips to the store and lugging all that heavy water around, but it saves the planet, lessens plastic, and it's healthier for you. So, so I almost never spend money on water unless I'm completely out, I'm somewhere where I have to buy water. The other thing is expensive food. Now I'm not saying be a Scrooge or a miser and never go out to eat, but some people make it a habit to eat out three times a day or more and add all those dollars up, 15, $20 a meal. If you're eating three times a day on that type of budget, I mean, think about that 60, 50, $60 a day spent in just food. Now think about the alternatives. Like I said, special occasion, your loved one, your mom, whoever has a birthday, you wanna take them out, so be it. But I want you to think about the other habits that you have. Buy some Tupperware, start to meal prep a little bit, and you'll be amazed. A whole plate of spaghetti is like next to nothing, a couple of dollars if you include all of that. Now. Obviously, we're not trying to all live like starving students, but if you think about it, if you keep your meals planned, not only are you impacting your budget, but also your health because you have more control. If you do go out buying drinks, drinks are very expensive. That's why the waiter or waitress comes up to you and says, do you want, and try this next time, do you want any drinks? And they'll recommend a whole bunch of whether it's alcohol or you know, a lemonade or iced tea or, or what have you. And you go, no, just give me water. Instantly, the kind of, the smile on the waiter or waitress kind of goes away because that's all adding to the bill at the end. And obviously 15% of, or 20% of whatever that bill is, is gonna be more to them. So kind of stay away from consuming your calories. Again, health benefit, but also a financial one, right? So stay away from all of the magical drinks they have, get water, put the money that you save from the water into maybe getting higher quality food or more food or what have you. Don't just drink not only your calories, but your money down your throat. I know I'm gonna get some hate for this one, but cosmetics and fragrances and all of those kind of things, a lot of the best moisturizers or skin creams in the world are different oils and different things that you can put on naturally. And if you stick to one brand, great. But nine times out of 10, people are overspending on cosmetics. Do you really need 36 fragrances by some European designer? Or can you just make do with one to have in your collection? Think about it, how many different lotions and creams and all of these other things can one person have? Walk into most people's bathrooms and they've got a ton of different kinds of shampoos. So cut down on all of these um, beauty products and realize that the money you're spending there, you can add to other things in the quality of your life. So just be aware of where your money's going with regard to products. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is limiting your exposure to addictive things like cigarettes and coffee. You might not like it, I get a lot of coffee hate from time to time from my relatives and stuff, but I don't drink it because I know I could have an addiction to it. And if I have an addiction to that, whether it's coffee or cigarettes or something else, I'm gonna be more prone to readily uh, spend money on it, even when I may not need to. I know people that just can't do without a cup of coffee, and I'm not saying again to completely change your lifestyle and not drink at all. But think about, maybe you can lessen the amount you drink. If you're drinking a $5 cup of coffee every day, maybe you can get a smaller size. Maybe you can bring it from home. So think about what your addictions are and try to limit those kind of things so that it's not costing you an arm and a leg over time. 
$5 a day can add up and $5 a day can really impact your individual retirement account. I know a lot of people that drink coffee that don't have an IRA, that don't have stocks or bonds or index funds or any one of those things, yet they spend thousands of dollars a year on coffee alone. Next, I wanna talk about vitamins and supplements. There's a whole bunch of studies that have come around and you know, I'm not saying don't get vitamins if you're deficient, right? If your doctor says, hey, you don't have enough vitamin D, don't go out there, run out there and all of a sudden buy a whole bunch of vitamin D when you haven't even walked out into the sunlight, right? Use your common sense approach. And I don't want to be someone that says, don't take any vitamins and then someone has a health reaction or something because they're taking my advice. I'm not a doctor, but I could tell you that most people think that vitamins are the catch-all cure-all and we in America take vitamins for all kinds of things. Yeah, you're not feeling good, maybe you have a bottle of vitamin C, but do you really need a whole bunch of supplements? I know guys out there that spend thousands of dollars sometimes a month just on different shakes and protein shakes and this and that, and but they're not even working out to their fullest level. So look at your consumption of vitamins and supplements and limit that as well. Next, I wanna to talk to you about brand name clothing. Now, I used to love to dress and I still have a nice wardrobe, but I don't nearly spend as much on clothes as I used to. Of course, we think differently as a society now, but buying brand name attire just because you like the you know, particular designer, or you want the big emblem on your chest that says Gucci or Prada or whatever, well, you might be spending a whole lot of money on something that's just a trend anyway. So think about simplifying your wardrobe. A black shirt is a black shirt is a black shirt, right? A black dress, the same thing, a white shirt. So look at your own wardrobe and start to design it in a way. It, it's all about how you style it. And if you don't have the money, you can go anything from thrifting to borrowing clothes, but keep your wardrobe very simple with simple colors. I'm not saying don't go out there and buy an occasional this or that, but the more you stick to basic traditional clothing, regular colors, the more likely you are to be able to save that money and put it to your finance. The other thing I almost never spend money on anymore is jewelry. Now, jewelry will be the same category as watches. Now, I used to love watches, and I'm just kind of sharing with you my own journey, if you will. I used to love watches, and I had really expensive watches when I was earning a lot of money and, quite frankly, was living a little bit more lavishly. But as I've gotten older, I realized that, heck, with all those watches, I can only wear one at a time. I might get a little bit of flack for this, but I used to love a Breitling or a Rolex or an Omega, uh, IWC. I, I used to like all of those brands, but nothing can really compete with my smartwatch. It tells me what my heartbeat is. It tells me what my distance is that I've walked today. It gets me all the things I really need to know. And so I ended up giving a lot of my watches to friends and family. I liquidated some of them because I just didn't need them anymore. And I only have like one or two watches now. So think about jewelry, even as a man now, unless your jewelry is part of your business, you shouldn't have a whole bunch of gold chains that look like Mr. T and you don't have adequate retirement savings or you don't have, you've never invested in real estate, but your jewelry alone is worth thousands. Now, Think about that. I want us to try to start to make wise choices because it's the wise choices that ultimately yield us the best results. So if you're a woman and you just have a thing for jewelry, have a nice couple of pieces. Have a couple of nice pieces in your collection of jewelry that one day can be an heirloom or you can give to your kids or you can give to your loved ones. But having a whole bunch does nothing but tie up your money. And the other thing I wanna to talk to you about finally is spending a lot of money in tech. Now, I know that people may wanna start a YouTube channel, for example. You can go out there and get a whole bunch of equipment or you could just keep it really simple and shoot off of your phone. I know people that are always upgrading from one MacBook to the next and how often are you using a laptop? If you're gonna spend on technology, make sure the technology is going to yield you something. So if you're a graphic designer, 
Maybe you want to have the best Apple computer because it's part of your job, but you don't need the latest and greatest technology out there. You don't always need to upgrade your iPhone all the time. I know that Apple did that one little shady thing, but by, you know, every time there was an update and you had an older iPhone, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Other than that, you don't, do you really need an iPhone or can you go and buy a phone that's still a smartphone? Look at where all your options are, even with technology, and don't become so consumed with always wanting the latest and greatest in anything. And that'll help you save a whole lot of money. Lastly, I wanna talk about your car situation. And if you don't need a car, only drive once in a while or you only use a car because you need to get to the airport or something like that, do you really need to tie thousands of dollars of maintenance, down payments, monthly payments, insurance, and all of these things? Those of us that live in cities such as San Francisco or New York or Los Angeles for that matter because now we've got better transportation, you can utilize all of that to get from point A to point B by looking at how often you travel. I am hoping that these tips really helped you. And like I said, all of the content that I do really comes from my years of experience in business and in finances. So if, if you enjoyed it, I'm hoping that you'll go to the next video I, where I talk about other financial advice.